Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. My name is Brian Stewart and in this lesson we're going over Science Book 4, Lesson 6, The Earth's Structure. So this is a good picture, isn't it? it? Shows the Earth's structure. Very simply, but we'll talk about this. In this lesson, you will discover what is inside the Earth and also what are the different parts of the Earth's surface. So, let's get started. Okay, we always start with vocabulary. So our first vocabulary is continent. Continent. Continent is one of the seven land masses of the Earth's surface. There are seven continents. Can you name them all? Of course, we have Asia, we have uh, Australia, and it also includes um, New Zealand, so we could call it Oceania. Some people call it Oceania. Africa, Europe, uh, North America, South America, and is that seven? We've got Asia, Oceania, Africa, Europe, North America, South America. We're missing one. Where did it go? Well, it's not on our map. It's on the South Pole. It's called Antarctica, right? That is another huge landmass that is all along the bottom of your map, if you look at your world map. It's not that big, of course. <laughs> oh, it's just the, the shape of the map. Okay, but it is a, it is a big landmass on the South Pole. And those are seven continents. Continents, of course, are land masses. That's where people live. People and animals and plants live there. Layer. Now, a layer is a thickness of a material covering a surface. So, think about your hand. There is a layer of skin on your hand, and the skin covers the entire surface of your hand. So, skin is a layer. It's a thickness, and your skin has certain thickness of a material that covers a surface. So, whatever it is, you know, there is a layer of something uh, that covers the surface of another thing. That is what we call the layer. Crust. Crust is an interesting word, okay? Now, I'm not talking about bread, okay? If you bake bread, you have... Um, uh, the, the bread gets baked and it's soft in the middle, but it might be a little bit hard on the outside. It's a little bit browner on the outside, depending on how you cook your bread. If you cook it too long, it gets black. But anyway, <laughs> the brown crust of your bread is the layer uh, around your bread. But the earth has a similar idea. The earth has a crust as well, and that's the top layer of the earth's surface. It's the outer part of the earth that covers the mantle. But the crust is really thick. Normally we talk about, you know, like the crust of bread is very thin, the layer of my skin over my hand is very thin, but the crust of the earth is very, very thick, especially in relation to us human beings, right? But that is the crust. It is in relation to the rest of the earth, it's kind of thin and it covers the mantle. Okay, we'll talk about mantle next. Mantle, of course, is underneath the crust. That's the inner part of the earth, and it covers the core. So, basically, we're talking about three parts of the earth, right? We have the crust here, we have the mantle here, and then the core is here. And, of course, the next one is core. Core, the center part of the earth. That's the middle of the earth. It's very hot. Nobody has ever been to the core. It's too deep. You can't, you can't dig or drill that far underground. Nobody has ever done it. Uh, in fact, the most drills that have ever uh, been done have really just poked little holes in the crust. It's very difficult to hit to the core, except for certain places on the earth. Okay, but that is the, the, we have the crust, we have the mantle, and we have the core. Those are the three main parts on the inside of the earth. Now, the next word is melt. If something is very, very hot, right, you turn it from a solid to a liquid. Now, you can turn rocks and metal that is very hard, and usually you think, you know, in, in the winter it gets very cold, but you can heat it up so much that it can turn into a liquid. 
I used to work at a mining company, a gold mining company. And to get the gold from the ground and to make gold bars, they would heat the ore. And they would heat it so much that the gold would settle on the bottom and then they could pour it out in, into a bar. And when it cooled, it was a bar of gold. It was pretty big and heavy. Okay, So you can melt almost anything from a solid to a liquid. Depth. Depth is the distance from the top to the bottom of something. So if you're thinking this is a good picture, right? So you think about the surface is up here of the ocean. That's the surface. What is the depth? That is the distance from the, from the layer of water on the surface to the bottom of the, uh, of the ocean, the rock. How deep is that? What is the depth? We could also say how deep is it? How deep? deep. So we change the word a little bit. How deep is it? We change the word. How deep is it? And uh, that's an adjective, right? Deep. Um, and that would be depth is a noun. What is the depth? Same question. The distance from the top to the bottom of something. So you could say like the swimming pool is the deep end. Oh, pandero. The opposite of deep is shallow. Shallow. So you have the shallow end of the swimming pool, you can stand up, but then the deep end, you cannot stand up because the depth is more than your height. Okay, next. Above. Above is something that is directly over or higher than something. Now this is an interesting picture. It shows the old idea of an iceberg. 99% uh, 90 of the iceberg is below water, 10% is above water. So the part of the iceberg that is above the surface of the water, we say it's above. And the opposite of that would be below, of course. So above, directly over or higher than something. And then, of course, our opposite word is below. Below means to be under something or lower than something. Of course, we're talking in relation to the surface of the water. So if it's under the surface of the water, it is below. And 90% of the iceberg is below the surface of the water. Now, if it's in this area, if it's over the surface of the water, it is above. Above and below, they are direct opposites. Okay, so those are our words for the lesson. Let's move on. Now, one of the main ideas of this lesson, of course, is to find out what is the structure of the earth. And remember, we talked about the earth having three main parts, right? We have the crust, and we learned these words in the vocabulary. We have the crust, which is the outer layer of the earth. The crust is here, right? It's very thin. Um, well, actually, in this picture, it's, it's, it's thicker. <laughs> okay, that's fine. This is the crust. Uh, and then we have the mantle. That's this red part here. And then the core. The center of the earth is the core. Don't be confused. It looks like it's two parts. It's one part here. So the core is the center of the earth. It's very hot there. So these are the three different parts of the earth's structure. Now, what about the Earth's surface, right? Instead of looking inside the Earth, what about if we look at just the surface of the Earth? Well, there are many different parts of the Earth's surface, and we use different words to describe different geological features. The first is an island. An island is a small piece of land with water on all sides. So, looks like we're circling here in the Caribbean, where it looks like we're circling uh, Cuba, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, those islands that are in the Caribbean. Of course, there are many different islands all over the world. They're just small areas of land that are surrounded by water. Now, of course, continents are also surrounded by water, but we don't really call them islands because they're so big. They're very big. Usually an island is smaller. Uh, you can cross the island in a day or, uh, you know, in a car easily. You could cross the island in a car e very easily. It's not a very big piece of land. Okay, a continent, of course, is a very big piece of land. It's each big piece of land. I'm, I'm talking about really big piece of land. A continent is huge. It would take days, months, years to walk across or, or uh, to drive across. It would easily take days to drive across a continent. Uh, 
But it is surrounded, it's also surrounded by oceans. And of course, uh, the circle here is on South America, which is a continent. You could say, well, isn't it an island? It's surrounded by water. No, not really, because it's so big. It is a continent. Okay, it's not really surrounded by water. Central America is attached to it right there. But anyway, okay. Then we have ocean. Now, ocean is interesting. Did you know that the oceans cover three-fourths of the earth? So, most of the earth is covered with water, and we call these oceans, salt water, and huge oceans. Of course, the circle is here is in the southern Pacific. The Pacific Ocean is the biggest ocean on earth, and you can't even see all of it from this map. You know, there's, there's some more of it uh, around the other side uh, when you come to Asia. So the Pacific Ocean is huge. And of course, there's still the Atlantic Ocean that we should talk about. There's the Indian Ocean. Uh, there's the Arctic Oceans. So there, most of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean. It's a large, deep body of salt water, right? Not fresh water. It's salty. And it covers three-fourths, three-fourths of the Earth. We only live on one-fourth of the Earth. Human beings can only live on one-fourth on the land, but three-fourths of the earth is covered with water. The earth is a really big place. Okay. Okay, let's do the reading together. And as we do the reading, I'll read it out loud. You guys repeat after me. Practice on pronunciation. Practice pronunciation. Don't practice on pronunciation. Practice pronunciation and focus on the words in the vocabulary. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Earth is like a very big solid ball. From its top to its center, Earth is about 6,000 kilometers in depth. Earth has three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust is about 5 to 70 kilometers in depth and is solid rock. People live on masses of land called continents. There are seven continents. They are part of the crust. Below the crust is the mantle, which is made of rock. It is about 3,000 kilometers in depth. The mantle is so hot that some of the rock is liquid. So that's what we're seeing here. If we look at this, they're really talking about this as the mantle. Maybe this is the, the rock that is melted, and this is the rock that is solid. So maybe two parts of the mantle. The crust is above the mantle and floats on it. The continents move very, very slowly. That's an interesting idea. You don't think about it. Land, rock, rock doesn't move. But actually it does. And this is a, you know, that's a whole new lesson. That's continental drift theory, uh, which says that the continents, you know, your land, your country is moving. <laughs> it's very slow and you don't notice it. It takes uh, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of years to really notice it. But it is moving and the continents are moving around. Below the mantle is the core. It is about 3,000 kilometers in depth. The core is the hottest layer. It is made of metal, some of which has melted. It's so hot in the core that the metal in the core is melted. It's liquid. It's like very, it's very, very hot. Now, of course, when we experience liquid rock in nature, we call it lava. And that's the material that comes up out of a volcano, right? And it comes up because it's very hot uh, underneath the earth. And so it's very hot, this, this so hot that the rock is actually liquid, right? And when it, there's pressure, boom, it comes spewing up out of the volcano. And this, of course, is a volcano. So we call that lava when the rock is melted. But the, but the volcano isn't picking up material from the core, that's way too deep. Uh, the volcano is picking up material from the mantle that's coming up to the surface. Okay. 
So, how was the ideas? How were the ideas in the reading passage organized? Here we have main ideas, and then we have details to support that main idea. The main idea is very simple. Earth has three layers. Well, that's very simple. That's very easy to organize. Three layers. Then we can talk about the crust or the mantle, and we can talk about、uh, we can talk about the crust. Sorry. Then we can talk about the mantle, and we can talk about the core. Okay. Now, unfortunately, these have been、uh, rearranged a little bit.、Uh, so we talk about the crust first, then we talk about the core, then the mantle. Really, it should be crust, mantle, core to keep it in good organization. Right, the top to the bottom. But anyway, that's okay. So the crust is beep the mantle. Excuse me. <clears throat> the crust is what the mantle. Remember, in the vocabulary, we were talking about、uh, the. Relationship in terms of location. You know, something might be above or below something else. So when we talk about the three layers of the Earth. Which layer is on the top? Which layer is on the outside? We that of course is the crust, and it is above the mantle. So that's our vocabulary word. It is above the mantle. Okay. Then beep are part of the crust, and they move slowly. So. Again, this is a point I made during the、um, the reading. It said it, but I also talked to you about continental drift theory. That is not a very old scientific discovery. It's only it's it's just about a hundred years now,、uh, maybe a little bit more than right around a hundred years old. Only a hundred years old that a scientist came up with the idea that land moves around on the surface of the Earth. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? For most of our history, we didn't know that. So, but what is moving around? What are these big pieces of land that move slowly across the crust、uh, or the surface of the Earth? We call those continents. 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 There we go. Continents are part of the crust, and they move very slowly around the surface of the Earth. Now we jump to the deepest. The core is the hottest layer and is mostly made of what? Well, if you think about it, the heaviest part of the Earth will, of course, sink to the to the very bottom, right, to where the the gravity is, right. And it is what what is that? What is heavier than rock? Well, of course, metals are heavier than rock, and so the core is mostly made of metal. However, it's not solid metal. Most of it is liquid metal. It's so hot. There's so much pressure、uh, at the core of the Earth. That pressure creates heat, and the heat melts the metal. So most of that metal is liquid. It's like、uh, like water, but don't touch it. <laughs> you can't survive in the core of the Earth, right? But it moves like water. It moves like a liquid. So it's liquid metal. Okay, the mantle is the layer in between the crust and the core, and it is so beep that some of the rock is liquid. So the, now we're talking about rock, right? Just rock turning into liquid, and of course that's lava when it comes up to the surface. The mantle is so what hot. The mantle is so hot that some of the rock is liquid. So you don't even have to get down to the core to get hot, very hot temperatures, right? The further、uh, the deeper you go in the earth. The hotter it becomes, because there's more and more pressure、uh, down there, because there's a lot of weight on top of things, and that pressure creates heat, and that heat will melt rock, and it will melt metal. Okay, so that's the reading skill. That's the、uh, also how the、uh, ideas were、uh, organized. So it's an interesting unit. I, I feel like it's a little bit short, but it's very simple. The Earth has just three layers, right? The crust, the mantle. And the core, and it's very interesting to learn about our world. And remember, the Earth is huge. It's really, really big. You may not realize it because you know you just go to school, you walk around your neighborhood, you walk around your town. Maybe you take trips to the countryside, but the Earth is so big. So I really encourage you to go out there, travel, explore, see some of the wonders of the Earth, and think about、uh, how many different. Uh, parts of the Earth there are different land masses. The Earth is mostly covered with water. There's a lot of amazing and interesting things to discover. And also, if we go deep into the Earth, we can we can also discover some more amazing things. Okay. So anyway, that's our lesson for today. Thanks for studying with me. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.